All right, so this came out of nowhere, didn't it? We had ourselves today's edition of Donnie and Dolly, which goes out there and talks about some really intriguing ideas that the Vancouver Canucks could potentially explore should they decide to go, dare I say it, this is going to be scary, all in. Maybe, right? All in? That's the thing that people are afraid of nowadays, especially when you consider what the price could be. Today's edition of Donnie and Dolly had a whole bunch of discussion as to whether or not the Vancouver Canucks could be targeting one Jake Gensel out of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, I'll admit, I didn't watch the show live when it was airing on Czech TV, I just kind of saw the clips, but this was posted as a video segment on their Twitter account. They did post themselves a poll wherein they asked whether or not Canucks fans would think that this is an appropriate target. And if you wanted to go out there and look at some of the results, hey, take a look at this. Our Bet99 poll question, should the Canucks move multiple pieces to acquire Jake Gensel? As of right now, there are 2,800 votes and 68.2% of them say no. Now, before we dive deep into this, let's talk about the profile for a little bit. Jake Gensel is 29 years old, signed till the end of this season, so he would be a rental should he be acquired in some sort of a Vancouver move. He's making $6 million a year, and this season, the guy has 42 points in 36 games played on pace for 96 points. This is kind of a rinse and repeat conversation like we had with the Oilers a few days ago. We did make a video talking about the rumors linking Gensel over to Edmonton because Chris Johnston went out there and said that the Oilers would probably be interested. But Donnie and Dolly on the show, which by the way, I'll link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the video clip. They do have a similar conversation, and I thought it was good to have this on the channel as well, because there are a few directions that you could go with a conversation like this. Firstly, you need to make sure that the Penguins would be interested in moving a guy like Gensel in the first place, which, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility if you wanted to say that they could restock some of their prospects and get a little bit younger while Crosby, Latang, Malkin are still here, especially if you're not confident that Gensel is going to resign in the first place, which could very well happen. I mean, the guy's 29 years old, so he could be looking for a pretty big payday, but then you have yourselves the Vancouver side of things. If Jake Gensel becomes a trade target, which Dollywall says, if Gensel is available, he wouldn't be surprised if Vancouver was all up in there because of a few things. Firstly, you have the relationship that Jim Rutherford has with Gensel. Gensel's last contract, $6 million over the span of, what was that, five years. It was actually signed by GM Jim Rutherford back in the day. It's been a pretty constant pattern that this new management, Rutherford, Alvin, etc., they like Pittsburgh players. You have Casey DeSmith, former Pittsburgh guy, Ian Cole, former Pittsburgh guy, Mark Friedman, former Pittsburgh guy, you had the JT Miller trade talks which were going on with the Penguins last year, same with Brock Besser. This is a management that likes to rinse and repeat. They cut and paste parts of their old teams and put it together in Vancouver like Frankenstein's monster. And if Jake Gensel is the final piece to that puzzle, he could be the second line left winger for JT Miller that really seals the deal on this year's top six. In fact, on today's Donnie and Dolly and Sportsnet collaboration with Jamie Dodd and Thomas Drance, he had yourselves a similar conversation that went down. They talked about the same things. That if the Vancouver Canucks are in a position where you want this year to be the year, which is all the while valid now, like, you cannot go out there and say that a team that is at the top of their division, they're literally first in the Pacific right now in terms of both points and points percentage, you cannot say that the Vancouver Canucks are not gonna at least be in some contending type of category this season. They're good. And this is the kind of thing where if you wanted to capitalize on that, do you go all in? Do you make a big splash? Do you say, all right, this is the year we got to go out there and do this because we don't know if we're going to be able to have this again next year. We don't know if Pedersen's coming back. We don't know if this amount of success with this group is going to carry over into next season because right now... The Vancouver Canucks in 23-24 are literally the best version of the Vancouver Canucks we've ever seen. There's never been an iteration of this team that has been as good as this year's squad. So, 
By the time the trade deadline comes, you're at a crossroads. Let's say the Vancouver Canucks continue winning games and they're still at the top of the Pacific by the time the deadline rolls around. Do you say, all right, this is going to be our introductory year to being competitive? Or do you say, we're going all in? There were some perspectives brought up on the Sportsnet and Donnie and Dolly collab where they said, yeah, like, I could understand if you wanted to go all in. This is a very peculiar circumstance, and it's not guaranteed to be happening again, so try to take advantage while you can. If Andre Kuzmenko gets going, you've got that first line with Elias Pettersson and Mikheyev. Mwah! Chef's kiss, very great line. And then, you have yourselves a second line with Besser, Gensel, and Miller, an all-American, American line to go out there for the ages and score a bunch of points? This could be super good, too. But the problem is, and this is what Don goes out there and says in the program, do you want to go out there and shell out a Le Karamaki or a Villander for this? For the first time in ages, the Vancouver Canucks finally have prospects that are actually worth talking about. They're not trading away all their first round picks, sure they traded away some of them, like the one from the Heronic trade, but this team actually has a prospect cupboard that is not bare. So do you want to go out there and make it bare once again to make this trade go through? Assuming it is a price of, like, let's say a first-round pick and a prospect or something like that, do you sacrifice the future, what a Le Karamaki could bring you, if it means bringing you a Jake Gensel in the now for a rental? This ultimately is the give and the take of conversations involving meaningful pieces in the NHL, because the Canucks are in a spot where, let's face it, if you had asked this question back in October, hey, should the Canucks trade Willander for Gensel? Like, everybody would have called you crazy. Why are you talking about that? There's no reason to talk about that. The Canucks aren't a contender. Like, they're not that good. Hold your horses there, fam. But now it's like, yeah, they are that good. They're literally first in the Pacific. This team is probably going to make the playoffs. They have a 90-something percent chance of making it. They have some of the highest odds in the NHL at winning the gosh darn Stanley Cup right now. And I'm not saying they're guaranteed to being a third-round team, Stanley Cup finalist team, whatever. I'm just saying that the possibility of that happening, right now at least, seems a lot more likely than it did three months ago. And as a result, you have to respect that timeline as to where the Canucks are in and ask whether or not this is actually worthwhile to think about. Jake Gensel could be that fit. If you want to talk about a fit to go with Miller and Besser, Gensel may be no better than perfect in that spot. Left-wing guy, he scores goals, he creates plays, he's nifty, he knows what it takes to play with star players, he's been on Sidney Crosby's wing this entire time. He can be a great fit, and he fits the profile of players that Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin have been looking for. Just, you know, former Pittsburgh Penguins. It's always like that, you know? Dolly even joked on the program saying that the Canucks really only go after two groups of players. One, former Penguins, and two, Swedes. So unless you're one of those two things, Swedish or a Penguin of the past, or currently, who really knows, Casey DeSmith was a Penguin last year, then Patrick Alvin may not actually try to get you, but Gensel fits the bill on one of those things, and he happens to be a very good fit if you were to place him into this lineup. So, my question goes out here to you. Let's assume Gensel is on the market. He's an expiring UFA, don't know if he's going to resign, the Penguins would rather get assets for him than lose him out for free. There's the philosophy. If he's on the line, and if Vancouver is as interested as Rick Dollywell believes they would be if Gensel was available, do you make a trade? Do you go Le Karamaki in a first for Gensel? Do you go big, steep, heavy price that sacrifices the future for what is a really good shot at getting to a second round and beyond this year? One more thing I'll add before this video ends off. They do say it on the program, but the fact that we can even have a conversation about this, the fact that the Canucks are good enough in the NHL that they could be considered buyers, and their prospect pool is good enough that we don't want to let go of guys like Lakaramaki and Villander or Elias Pettersson, the other one. The fact is, this team is in the best spot it's been in in years, and this is a conversation that we could not have had at any point in the past few years because they were never good enough. Now they are. So not only does that open the door to greater and bigger conversations like this, it also opens the door to me making more YouTube money because every single thing becomes relevant now and people are dying to eat it up. But for the Vancouver Canucks, this is probably the best team we have had ever, statistically speaking at least. So do you shell out Villander to make it better? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And... Bye.